Zapier is well known as one of the largest automation providers available, with support for over 7,000 apps and counting. But recently, Zapier has been expanding the scope of their software beyond automation. Over the last year, they've been adding new ways to organize your data and share your automations. Today, we're going to explore one of Zapier's major new features that ties everything together, Zapier Interfaces. Hi, I'm Tom from X-Ray Tech, the workflow company. At X-Ray, we use software like Zapier to help our members automate their tasks and create more time for meaningful work. If you'd like to learn more about X-Ray and our services, check out our website at xray.tech. To see more workflow automation news, updates, and tutorials every week, like this video, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new way to save time. In this video, I'll give you an overview of what Zapier interfaces are and what you can use them for. Then I'll walk you through the process of creating an interface from scratch with pages that contain link cards, an AI chatbot, and a contact form that launches an automation. There's a lot to cover here, so let's get started. First, let's go over the basics. What are Zapier interfaces? A Zapier interface is a simple web page built with an intuitive visual editor. Pages built in Zapier interfaces can include custom text, media, and links, as well as forms and Kanban boards connected to your Zapier tables. You can also use interfaces to launch your zaps and even create an AI chatbot. All Zapier plans include two interface projects for free. To unlock more projects and additional features like custom domains, password protection for your published pages, and conditional logic for your forms, you'll need to pay an additional monthly fee. We've added the pricing pages to the resources board so you can see everything each plan includes. The best use case for Zapier interfaces is to create a portal for your team or clients to access an automation and its related data. However, Zapier interfaces only supports other Zapier products. If you're using a variety of software to build your automations, like Airtable, Make, Power Automate, or Google Sheets, then you should consider delivering your automated workflows with X-Ray Workflow. X-Ray Workflow is an app developed by our team at X-Ray Tech. It's designed to let you organize resources from around the web into a convenient, shareable board. In each board, you can link or embed zaps, but you can also add Airtable forms and automations from other providers, documents from Notion and Google, or really any web-based resource that you want. You can learn more about X-Ray Workflow and download it for free at xrayworkflow.com. Now let's get back to Zapier interfaces. I'm going to show you how to create an interface step-by-step -step and add components like links, forms, and an AI chatbot to your interface pages. There are tons of choices available in interfaces, and I'm not going to be able to go into each minute detail on every option and setting. Just leave a comment down below if there's any specific features you want to see us cover in more depth. Also, before we dive into this tutorial, I just want to note that all Zapier interfaces are publicly accessible by default. You'll need to upgrade to a premium plan to restrict access to your interface. So keep that in mind as you're exploring the interfaces feature. To get started, open up Zapier and click on the interfaces option in the left-hand menu. If you haven't created any interfaces yet, you'll see a long gallery of templates that you could use to quickly get started. For now, click on start blank. Here, Zapier will offer up a couple more generic templates, a form and a customer portal. There's also a link to the full template library. If you couldn't tell, Zapier really wants you to start with the template. However, I'm going to show you how to build an interface from scratch. That way, you'll know how it all works and you'll have an easier time customizing a template later on. Click on Start from Scratch to make a new interface. On the main Interface Builder page, you'll see three sections, Pages, Tables, and Zaps. Your interface can include several different pages, which will all be listed here. To start, you'll just see the default first page for your interface. The various components you can add to your pages will often reference specific Zapier tables and Zaps, and those will be listed here too. Let's start customizing our interface by checking out this initial page, which doesn't have any content at all yet. When we click on it, we're immediately prompted to add a component to the page. You've got several choices here, like form, Kanban, and chatbot but we'll start very simple and just select text to give our empty page a header. Click add to add any of these elements to your current page. Once your page has at least one component, you'll see a preview of your page here in the middle of the screen. When you select a component, you can edit its contents, styling and settings in this panel to the right. So I'll change this text block to say my first Zapier interface and give it a little description. Below, you can find some helpful links and other resources to check out. 
Note that this text box uses Markdown for styling, and Zapier provides some basic Markdown formatting tips right here. We could turn this header into a subheader by just adding another pound sign, or hashtag, or octothorpe, whatever you prefer. But I'll leave it as a full-size header for now. You'll also see a few more options to change the width, alignment, and text alignment of the component. I'll change the width to medium, but I'm fine with the default center alignment, so that component's all set. Note that if you'd like to open up your published interface at any time, just click on this link in the top right. Let's start fleshing out this page a bit more by adding an area for link cards. To add a new component to a page, just click on this plus sign in the bottom of the page. Then you can scroll through the menu of components or search for the one that you want. I'll search for link and click on link cards to add the component to my page. It starts off with just one card, but we can add more cards here. You can use link cards to link to external URLs or to other pages in your Zapier interface. We'll add a couple more pages to this interface in a moment, and I'll make sure to link to them from here. But for now, I'll select the first card and edit it to point to our company's website, xray.tech. Note that you can also add a title, description, and emoji for each link. You can also choose to have links open in a new tab, which I will enable so that users won't lose the interface just by clicking on the link. This card is all set, so I'll click on Done. Links are a useful feature, but let's see what we can really do with this interface. Let's add a page with an AI chatbot. We could add a chatbot component to this page, but I really want to keep this home page as a simple directory for the whole interface. You can click on the blue plus up here in the page menu to add a new page. Give your page a name. I'll call mine chatbot. Then click create page. You'll see a list of components to start with. To add a chatbot to the page, just scroll down a bit and select chatbot. If you've already created a chatbot in Zapier, you'll be able to select it from the menu on the right. If not, you can just create a new one now. This will open up Zapier's chatbot feature in a new tab. I'll create a new bot and I'll call it Workflow Automation Helper. There are a lot of options here, but they'll all be pretty familiar if you've messed around with any other popular AI chatbots recently. I'll go over some of the settings quickly, but let us know in the comments if you'd like to see a video dedicated to Zapier's AI chatbots. You can check out one of our previous videos we made a few months ago, but many of the settings we showed then have since been updated. Now let's quickly customize this chatbot into a workflow automation assistant. I'll update the greeting text a bit. Then for the model, you'll have to stick with GPT 3.5 unless you upgrade to a premium plan. Under Instructions, you can add a custom directive. On a premium plan, you can also upload files as knowledge sources. Zapier provides a rough template for the directive, which you can easily customize. I'll just paste my customized directive that I prepared earlier with some details that are relevant to X-Ray and workflow automation. Under Actions, you can configure actions that are available to the user while interacting with your chatbot. You could add a button that launches a zap, making it easy to send the AI's output to another app. You could also add a button that lets the user easily copy the text of the response. For now, I'll just add a button to copy the response. We can't update the style without a premium plan, and there's no conversation history to view yet, so we're all set with this chatbot. Let's go back to our interface. Now, we can just attach the Workflow Automation Helper to the chatbot component in our interface. Any of the technical settings for the chatbot will have to be edited through the chatbot menu. In the Interfaces Builder, all you can do is change the height, width, and alignment of the chatbot component. Since there's nothing left to edit, let's see how it works in action. I'll click on the link here to open up the interface. Now, I'll ask it a simple question. What are the benefits of workflow automation? Immediately, it starts drafting a numbered list of all the ways that workflow automation can help people save time and create more consistent results. And once the answer is complete, here's the copy button that we set up earlier. Now I'll try a more specific question. How can I automate HubSpot with Zapier? After a moment, it gives me a fairly generic but pretty decent summary of how you could automate HubSpot, or any app really, with Zapier. This isn't half bad for an AI chatbot we set up in a few minutes, but if you want to tweak your chatbot's output, you could always go back to the settings to adjust the directive and fine-tune its answers. 
The chatbot itself might not stack up to the functionality offered by Chatbase, BotPress, or other dedicated chatbot providers, but it's hard to beat the ease of setup here. If you're using lots of Zapier products already, like interfaces, then the chatbot could also be a good choice. Now I'll just go back to the interface builder and add a link to our new chatbot page. In the first page, I'll add a link to the link cards component. This one will link to an internal page instead of an external URL. And I'll choose the new chatbot page. I'll add an appropriate emoji and click done. Great, now we can easily navigate to the chatbot page from the homepage of our interface. However, the name page isn't exactly descriptive. I'll click on home to go back to the interface builder home screen and rename the first page to interface home for clarity. Let's wrap up this interface overview by adding one more page with a form. I'll add a new page the exact same way I did before for the chatbot page, and I'll call this new page contact us. Now to add a form component to the page, just select form. It should be the first option in the list. A form in a Zapier interface has to be connected to a Zapier table. Like with any simple spreadsheet app, Zapier tables are pretty straightforward to create, so I won't go into details on how to create a table. Just know that if you want to set up a table quickly, you can always import a CSV to get all your records uploaded at once. I'll choose this interface contact request table I already prepared for this interface. Once you choose your corresponding table, Zapier will create a form component with a question that matches each field in the table. Note that while preparing this video, we frequently ran into an error where the form component wasn't configured correctly after picking a table. If you see this error, refresh the page and try again. You can customize your form by reordering the questions, changing the button text, adjusting the alignment, and even adding a CAPTCHA for verification. If you select any fields within the form, you can also edit the label, placeholder text, help text, and other similar settings. On premium plans, you can add conditional logic to your forms too. Under the data tab, you can change which table the form is connected to. And under actions, you can configure actions that occur after a user submits the form. By default, the form will display a message confirming that the submission was recorded. But you could also add actions to open up a new page or run a zap. Let's pick run zap and create a zap to send a Slack notification for each new form submission. Since this video is about interfaces and not zaps, I'll just skip to the finished zap. But if you'd like to learn more about building zaps, you can check out our Zapier beginner's guide, which we've updated for 2024 to include the latest details about Zapier's UI and features. Back in the interface builder, our form is all set. I'll just add a link to the form on the interface homepage so we can easily navigate to the form. Now I'll open up the interface, click on the contact us link and submit a new request. Shortly after, I can see a new notification in Slack detailing the request. With Zapier interfaces, you can easily share forms with your customers or team members and launch zaps whenever there's a new form submission. Of course, you could also accomplish something similar using other tools with forms like Airtable, SmartSuite, or Webflow. And depending on your existing tech stack, X-Ray Workflow might be worth checking out too to organize your forms, tables, and other related resources into convenient boards. But if you're using Zapier tables, chatbots, and other Zapier products already, then Zapier interfaces are a convenient way to connect them all together. Zapier interfaces are a simple way to compile your automations, tables, and chatbots into easily accessible web pages. But if you're using a wider array of tools, then you may want to explore alternative solutions like Airtable interfaces or X-Ray workflow boards. However, Zapier Power users will definitely want to check out interfaces to get the most out of the platform. If you've enjoyed this video, prove you're human, like and subscribe for more automation tips every single week. If you'd like to learn more about low-code automation and workflow design, follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, or Facebook, and you can find all of our content on our website at xray.tech. You can find all those links in the resources board down below. And as always, find your focus and stay in flow. Trying to future-proof yourself? Start designing the way your team works with no-code tools, automation, and AI.
An X-Ray's workflow design course will show you how to break down every part of a process to find the best opportunities for automation and how to seamlessly integrate those automations into your team's daily work. You'll learn how to create time for your entire team, get more reliable results, and give everyone a newfound clarity and confidence in their work. Go to course.xray.tech to learn more. The entire package includes over two hours of premium video content, challenging example projects, and tons of helpful resources. The course costs just $250 and gives you lifetime access to a Slack community of workflow designers building systems in dozens of different industries. Space is limited, so join the free waiting list to get notified as soon as the course is live later this year. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you soon in our workflow designer course.